I lost $25,000 on a business idea that I had for a new type of cat carrier that had a clear plastic lid and that opens upwards like the doors to a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you exactly what happened, where all the money went, and what the three biggest mistakes that I made are. So I came up with this idea three years ago and I simply went online and Googled product designers and tried to find people that would be able to actually design it for me and then actually help me produce it. Now there was a bunch of different quotes that I got, some from local companies in Ottawa, Canada where I lived, but also some from companies that were based abroad. And the local quotes were pretty expensive whereas I got quoted by this one designer based out of Brazil for basically half of the price and I decided to go with him. So here I was working with my first designer. He was a freelancer based out of Brazil and honestly, he did not know what he was doing. He worked with me a bit on the initial design and we actually had a very preliminary prototype made in China but in the end, he bailed on the project halfway through. And as it turned out, when I went to find a new designer, the actual designs that he had done weren't even going to be compatible for manufacturing anyways. And so I basically had to start over from scratch. And so that is where the first $12,000 went. Over 8,000 for product design, and I think something like 3,600 for that first prototype, which also I definitely overpaid for. In the meantime, while I was working on that design, I was also trying to get a logo. I first tried to get a logo on Fiverr for $5, but it ended up looking terrible. So then I paid a little bit more money to get something a lot better. I also registered a company, which cost a little bit of money, and also registered the domain name for the website. Altogether, that other stuff was not really a big deal. It was the product design that was really the first big hit. So after that fiasco, I was down over $12,000 and basically a year behind because it turned out that the whole thing had to be redesigned anyways. So I started looking for new design companies and this time I went with a local firm that was actually legit. They had multiple employees, so it wasn't just a freelancer and they seemed interested in the product and they said they'd be able to help me get it over the finish line. So I said, great, let's do it. Now these guys were great. They gave me a great price on the design work and also helped me source new prototypes that were a lot cheaper than the one I'd gotten before. They helped me finish the design, improved it a lot, and also made sure that it was gonna be compatible with manufacturing. Because if you want to manufacture a product out of plastic, it has to be designed in a specific way so that it can be produced for plastic injection molding. And that's really the only cost-effective way to to mass produce something. And so that cost me another $9,000 to finish the design work and to get a new working prototype that I was planning to use to shoot promotional materials and then potentially launch a Kickstarter campaign that I would be able to use to roll this over into a business. But before doing that, I wanted to protect my intellectual property. So with my new design and prototype in hand, I decided to apply for design patents in Canada and the US. The patent application is normally pretty expensive. In fact, some companies will spend tens of thousands of dollars applying for patents. I, however, am lucky because I had a family connection to IP lawyers. And so I was able to file patents in North America for around $2,600, which included paying for the special types of patent drawings that have to be included in the application. And once the patent papers were filed, I was into this for over $23,000 but I was ready to start marketing the product and go public with it. And this is where the real problem started. For starters, I had to go and get quotes from potential suppliers in Canada and also in China so I could figure out how much it was gonna cost me to launch this and actually start producing the product because without knowing that, then you can't determine what price you're gonna to have to charge for it. And when I got the quotes, it was like a bucket of cold water being dumped on me. Because it turns out it's actually super, super expensive to produce the machinery pieces that are required to do plastic injection molding. And some of the quotes that I got were saying it was gonna cost me around $140,000 for just the equipment to produce the products. And that's not even including the cost of the materials and the labor to actually put it all together and get it ready to ship to someone. Now the variable costs per unit to produce this wasn't going to be crazy. And I definitely could have had a reasonable profit margin, but the fact that I was gonna have to come up with that much upfront capital, probably around 150 to 200,000 US dollars to do the startup, to buy the equipment, and then to actually do the first run of products to be able to ship it out to people that purchase on Kickstarter. And so my options to get the funding to start actually producing this product were either sell thousands or 10,000 plus units on Kickstarter, or take out a massive loan, or try and get 
hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of investments from people, which I didn't really want to do. Now, at this point, I had also had to hire an accountant to help me do the taxes, and I was into this for probably about $24,000 total, and I told myself I was willing to spend a few thousand more on marketing to try and see whether or not there's actually a market for this product. But I was definitely approaching the limit of the amount of personal capital that I was willing to put into this without having actually a light at the end of the tunnel. So even given the obstacle of the massive amount of funding that I needed to put together to actually move to produce this product, I started marketing on Facebook and on TikTok and on Instagram. And I actually did have some considerable success, especially marketing on TikTok, where a couple of my videos went viral and one of them got a couple hundred thousand views. But from that, I took away some positive, but also some negative points. There was definitely some people saying they liked the look of the product and that they would buy it, which I took as a positive signal because this was the first time the general public had had a chance to weigh in on the product. But there was also some comments that were negative and that I realized I would have to address before actually taking this product to the next level. So for example, some comments were saying that it didn't look like there was enough ventilation with the lid, and some other comments were suggesting that it didn't look sturdy or secure enough to put their cat in. And so I realized, even if there is enough ventilation, because it had two long ventilation shafts on either side, I would have to add more to make it look like there was enough ventilation, because it's really the perception that matters, not the reality. So the first perception of people has to be, oh, that looks like a cat carrier that has enough ventilation. And same thing with the security. So I realized I would have to probably redesign the latches or the hinges or something like that to make it look and feel more stable and secure so that people would be willing to buy it and trust putting their pet in it. So these are two relatively major changes that would have to be made to the design before I could even proceed to the next step. And so at this point, after speaking to my product designers, I realized I would have to spend another eight to 10,000 to fix the product and then also to have a new prototype made and shipped to me so that I could redo the marketing materials. I'm faced with the decision. Do I put another $10,000 of my own money into this project to redesign it and then a few thousand more on marketing trying to do a Kickstarter launch to raise a massive amount of money that I'm not even sure if I can raise. And I had already started working on the Kickstarter pre-launch page and started speaking with some people that had more expertise in the Kickstarter business. And I realized that really it's very unlikely to raise that kind of money on Kickstarter. It's only something like 1% or 0.1% of projects that raise $100,000 or more. You need to be very skilled at marketing. And most of those people that do that successfully and raise you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on Kickstarter, they're not just individual people working out of their garage like I am. They're real businesses, real firms with entire teams of people dedicated to marketing and content creation and all that. And here I was one single guy with an idea, but with no real expertise in any of these fields and trying to do literally everything on the project from legal to accounting, to cost analysis, to marketing and everything in between. So the odds were definitely stacked against me and considering all of this, I decided that it was time to put a pin in the project. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think that the product has a potential fit here somewhere. People buy funky cat carriers all the time. You see people carrying around their cats in backpacks, and there's lots of people that would potentially be interested in a product like this if it was designed to fit the specs of what I think it needs to be. So now that you know the backstory of what happened, let me tell you about the three biggest mistakes that I made and what I would do differently if I was going to start this whole process over again. Number one, validate the idea first. This was the biggest mistake that I made bar none. When I started the project, I thought that the most important thing was to protect the intellectual property. But I realized now that the most important thing I should have done before spending any significant amount of money was to validate that there's product market fit and to get public feedback. Now, it's definitely hard to do this without having anything to show. And having the prototype was a useful way for me to actually go viral on TikTok and get a lot of feedback. But I probably could have found some way to get public feedback without having to spend tens of thousands of dollars to get it. And getting that early public feedback would have helped a lot. I could have either addressed the design comments in the process of designing it and then made the product better and made it ready to be released as soon as I was done. Or I could have realized earlier that there was no product market fit 
and that could have cut my losses. Now, it's definitely tough to balance this because I know from speaking with lawyers that you can't necessarily get a patent on an idea if it's already in the general public. And I really wanted to get a patent. That was the thing that I was most worried about at that early stage. But now I realize that I had my priorities mixed up. The second biggest thing that I learned is don't cheap out. You actually do get what you pay for in most cases. And when I was looking for a product designer, I shouldn't have chosen the half price budget option. I should have just gone in the first place with people that knew what they were doing because I would have saved myself a lot of time and a lot of money. The same thing goes with the logo design. And this is a lesson that I've learned after making the mistake a couple times. Do not cheap out. You get what you pay for. And definitely, especially in this case, quality was more important. And the third biggest thing that I learned is that it's really hard to do it all alone, especially with a business like this. Some businesses are definitely possible to run solo, like drop shipping, where all you do is the online marketing and somebody else handles the rest of it, all of the logistics. In this case, it was way too ambitious for me to think that I could invent and then design and then patent and then do the cost analysis and market and launch the project and then actually do the logistics of shipping it and dealing with the taxes and the accounting and everything way too much for one person. And looking back now, I think that even if I had chosen to spend the extra $10,000 to redesign the product and then gone ahead with the Kickstarter launch, it probably would not have been successful anyways because it was just way too much for one person and you need a team to pull things like that off. So yeah, that is my story of how I spent $25,000 and I guess lost $25,000 on this idea for a new type of cat carrier. Now, technically I'm still holding the North American design patent for cat carriers that open upwards and have a clear plastic lid. So who knows, maybe that'll be worth something at some point in the future, or maybe I'll revisit this later on if I have an idea of how I can actually pivot it to something that has a better chance of being successful. But that is my story. Hopefully you found it entertaining or potentially useful, and I hope you have a great day.